This is uh, going through e equilibrium problems for AP physics, which is out of chapter 12. We don't do the whole chapter. So I, I don't consider this new material. This is more like looking at specific problem types uh, because you know equilibrium means that and you know it means that, but we haven't really done like explicit application where we focus on only these kinds of situations. So in this little topic that we're doing, these problem types that we're doing, we're in doing what we've done before where the center of a mass is where you know we consider the weight of the object acting. We kind of did that with the like meter sticks where we treated them at their center, but this is a little bit more explicit because we're going to be talking about the torque that gravity causes. And then the other thing is, we never really said this too much, because usually we were summing up the torques about a reference point, usually the origin on the xy axis. So we get to pick where we want to sum the torques about um, and the reference point that we're using. So to make life as easy as possible, we pick a point that's going to eliminate some unknowns. So we can take a three unknown situation and eliminate two unknowns and just get one equation with one unknown. And we use that to our advantage. So that's something that I'll point it out as we're going through it. So uh, we're looking at like a, a classic seesaw problem. And I'm sorry that my graphics are so poor on here, but we have an 80 kilogram person with a child that's 15 kilograms and the fulcrum, this point of support is right here. And so we're trying to determine the location of the fulcrum in order to create static equilibrium. In other words, that these guys are perfectly balanced. And uh, as often as the case, I try to get you guys to draw um, some sort of free body diagram. So it's good to kind of represent everything that's going on as simply as possible. So we have the 80 kilograms person's weight. Let me switch to red there. All right, so there's their f weight vector, right? And that's going to be, I believe, 784 newtons. And then we have this 15 kilogram person whose weight is acting that way, a smaller arrow. And that's, I think, 147 newtons for 15 kilograms. Then we have the fulcrum, and that's the thing. We don't know where it is. Uh, the fulcrum is pushing up, and I hope that makes sense that this little triangle here is pushing up, I'll call that F sub F, pushing up there, and it's at that distance X away. And uh, the idea of this is we want to just find that position. So we don't need to figure out the force. We could pretty easily, right, because this upward force of the fulcrum should be that plus that. So we could actually find that force if we were asked to super fast, but we don't need to do that. What we need to do is find this distance x. And um, we needed an equation with that force in there. So it makes sense to choose it. You know, I think choosing this end as the origin, I'll just call that my reference point, my x equals zero. And that way, um, we actually will need to figure this out then. Uh, we can use the summation of torques. So the fulcrum is providing a torque around that origin that way, whereas the child at the end is providing a torque the other way. And those two must be balanced if this is an equilibrium. So uh, that's the equation we're going to write. And that's, the, I think, what people like about this the least, is you have to make up your mind which point are you picking, right? And so we could have picked this point or that point. Those would have been the points that made the most sense to pick. I'm just picking that one on the right. And there's a few ways you could do this. Um, and those, I'm going to do it this way. All right. So uh, the torque net is equal to zero, right? And so I'm going to put a little arrow up here indicating I'm choosing that point when I build my equation. So switching to blue here, I start to build the equation. Uh, the force of the fulcrum, which we can figure that out pretty quickly by adding, times x, right? That'll be the torque from that fulcrum force. And then the child's torque's the other way. So we're going to actually acknowledge that it goes the other way by making it negative. And that whole stupid thing is 12 feet long. And, um, you know, the, the, the units don't matter. That might be bothering you a little bit. I'm just going to say feet there. And uh, that's it equals zero. So once I know this, you can see I get a very solvable equation. That's going to be equal to their two weights together. You might be thinking, like, I'm mixing metric with non-metric units, but that's that's okay. So let's see. I'm it's at the end of the day for me, so my math brain is taking a vacation. So 784 plus 147. 
So I get 931. So um, I'll end up with this after I solve. So I'll be taking that times that. So 147 times 12 gives me 1764 Newton feet, which is a unique unit. Um, and I'm dividing it by the sum of those weights. And see how the Newtons cancels out. We get feet. And so, let's see, then divided by 931, I can do math. And I get 1.89 feet. And so that's the end of the story. Now, um, you might, if you're really trying to master this, most of you guys are, you know, your tanks are almost empty. But you can pick, you can redo it and pick that point, and you would have 784 times x one way, and then you'd have to do uh, 12 minus x for this distance, right? You could do that. 12 minus x, and you should get the same solution for that, same value, you know, answer. But I'm not going to bore you by doing it two or three different ways. But you guys have to practice this. This doesn't come for most people right off the bat. Um, this is like a scaffold. So that brown thing there is a board, and there is rope A holding it up, and rope B that's not all the way at the end. And then we have this, uh, what do we have? A 40 kilogram block right there. That's also in the midst of this thing. And uh, so we want to determine the tension in both ropes. Um, so we don't have to worry about acceleration because it's not accelerating. But we've got a fair number of unknown, unknowns there. We, we've got two, right? And so um, we can use torque rather than do a, you know, vertically. You know, the rope A is acting up and the rope B is acting up. And so we know what the sum of those need to be. But we don't know what the individuals are. So we're going to go right to the torque equation. And I say the torque equation. It doesn't look like much. Torque net equals zero. And then we, we pick a spot. So this is the part that I find people are like, what should I pick? Well, sometimes if you're not sure, just pick something and get going. If I pick that spot or that spot, right? Notice how when I pick this spot, it'll eliminate rope A's torque. The, you know, don't forget torque is R cross F. And so the R is zero. And so rope A exerts no torque. And that way we get an equation that has how many unknowns? Just one. We'll get this, right? That one's torque will be in it. So I'm choosing that point, and so the sum of the torques will be equal to the uh, the weight. I mean, let's take a break here and figure out. You know, I'm going to draw that weight force of that 40 kilograms there, and that's going to be uh, 392 newtons, I think. And then we have this unknown force of the rope B acting up that tension in B. Okay. And, oh, I don't let me forget, you almost let me forget, the plank 35 kilograms. So in the center of this plank, it's 14 meters, so it's 7 meters away from my end there. I've got this weight of the plank, which, off the top of my head, what's 35 times 9.8? Uh, 343 newtons. So I'm going to have one, two, three terms in this equation. And then we'll just go left to right. So the 40 kilogram weight, its torque is going to be equal to its 392 newton uh, times that 2.6 meters. All right. And notice we don't; these are that that force is perpendicular to the to our radius right there. Right. So we don't have to worry about. Uh, sine of 90 because it's equal to 1. Now you have to decide whether you want clockwise to be positive or negative. If we stick with our math conventions, that's clockwise is negative torque, so I'll put a minus sign in front of that. The weight of the 343, the plank itself, is also going to be a negative torque times 7 meters. So that's acting in the middle of that plank, right? That's one of our assumptions is that we're dealing with uh, homogeneous, homogeneous uh, um, objects, and so the center of mass is in the geometric center of the object. And then finally, I can tell that the tension in B, I'll call it TB, tension in B is, is providing clockwise torque, so I don't put a minus sign in front of that. And that's 11.3 meters from the end. And then we, I'm just going to barely squeeze it in. That should all add up to zero. So you see how there's our equation with one unknown. And once we know the tension in rope B, we can go back and and figure out the tension in rope A pretty easily, which I'll show you, okay? So the important part is over. We, we the, Everything else now is math, which is, that's important too, but it doesn't involve as much thinking. Uh, and I don't have this stuff pre-baked and ready for you, so just bear with me. You can fast forward if this part is even, you know, cruel and unusual punishment. Uh, 
and that guy is going to go over to the other side, so minus TB times 11.3. And so those two added together, I get uh, this. So my, you know, sort of my pre-answer is going to be the 3420.2 divided by 11.3. Oops, 11.3, and I get, uh, let's see, that rounds to 303. Okay, so that's my tension in rope B, which that confirms with my presented answer there. Now, how do we figure out rope A? Well, we could do a whole other torque equation, but that seems like overkill. We can finally use poor F net equals MA as sort of like, what about me? Uh, since it's not accelerating, right? That's zero, so F net. It's an equilibrium, right? So that is pretty dopey, and we're really looking at the y direction. And so TA is acting up, TB is acting up, and I've got all these weights, right? I've got the 40 kilogram weight. I'm just going to use that notation there. I've got the the weight of the plank itself, right? But all it's all got to cancel out. So I've already figured out those weights up there in the blue ink. So um, I can just, uh, um, you know put those in. I didn't treat them as vectors, so those are going to be negative. So 392, 343, right? Because they're acting down. And I've got TB is acting up. So here's my TA is like my X. Right? So that's what I need to do. And so 392 and 343 give me a total of 735. And I subtract that 303 from that. And I get 432. And yeah, that's what my answer was. Just checking to make sure I don't make a silly mistake. So TA is 432 newtons. And that's the end of the story. Morning glory. Thanks for tuning into this. Oh, wait, let's do another one. All right? Let's do one more. And this is uh, it's like bonus material, right? We downloaded Mr. Britton's YouTube video earlier, and you're getting an extra track, yo. Um, so ladder problems are a little harder because the you have more angle issues in it. But we might as well take a look at this. Um, you can see it's another one of my glorious pictures here. Um, and so it's good to try to draw your own pictures. Basically, that point of contact with the ladder on the bottom, there's two things happening. We, it's really one thing happening, but we break them up. We have the normal force that's supporting the ladder, and then we have a force of static friction that's acting inward. That's why you want to make sure the ladder has a good grip there. You don't want to like, put it on ice and get it climb up the ladder. It'll slip out from you. All these problems we do, we assume the wall is frictionless because it would be a much harder problem to solve if there was an up-down friction acting at this point. So since there's no friction, all the wall can do is push out uh, horizontally like that. And so that's acting like that. And then we have, you know, typically we have a person on the ladder. So this guy is going to be three meters up this ladder. How long is this ladder? 10 meters. So that could be where their weight is being applied. And then you've got, I'll put a green dot in, in the middle of the ladder. That's the weight of the ladder itself at five meters up. So um, doing what I'm doing right now is pretty important because if you're just using equations, you're not really getting it. So the ladder has a 200 newton, let me get my green pen here, 200 newton. So I'm just going to put a downward 200 newton arrow there. Nice. And then this character that's climbing up the ladder is 500 newtons character. So that's 500 newtons there for that weight vector. Okay. So uh, all those forces, you know, cancel out, all their torques cancel out and add up to zero. So when you, you know, look at a typical problem, we don't know what this is right off the bat. We don't know what this is right off the bat. We don't know what that is right off the bat. But we do know the weight of the person on the ladder. So we can pretty quickly figure out this normal force, right? Because look at it. What, what are the vertical things? There's only one, two three vertical things. So the two downward ones are 700. So doesn't this have to be 700? Right? Word. Sorry. Okay, so that's got to be 700 newtons up. And that's due to equilibrium. Uh, the F net Y direction is equal to zero. So the 200 plus the 500 cancel with the 700 that we just figured out. Now, we don't know what this is. And we don't know what the wall is, but we do see that they're the only horizontal forces, so they need to be equal in size but opposite in direction. So let's 
If we choose, and this is typically what we do for a ladder problem, is we're going to choose this spot where the bottom of the ladder is in contact with the ground. And if we choose that as our point of reference and use TorqueNet adds up to zero, which it does, we can get an equation with the wall force in it and solve for that. And then we'll know the friction force and then we'll know anything else essentially that we want to know. So that's the trick to it. And it becomes a little bit of a geometry issue. So if you're still tuned into this, bear with me because we're, we're, we've got how many torques do we have? Well, the normal force and the force of friction have R's of zero, so they don't provide torque. And that's kind of why we choose that spot, right? But the weight of the person on the ladder, they're you know, there's some torque there, and then the weight of the ladder itself provides torque, and then the counter torque that's keeping it balanced is coming from the wall, right? And so um, I've got the, you know, if I just kind of do it out simply, the torque of the uh, person, their weight, plus the torque of the FG of the ladder, right? Those are going one way, right? Those are going counterclockwise, so the wall is countering that. So the torque provided by the force from the wall balances that out. And so we need to remember that torque is R cross F, and uh, there's different ways to approach this, but this sort of brings us back to chapter 10, where the position vector is different for all these. And, you know, I prefer when I go through these is to either look for the, and this is typically what I do, is I look for the part of the position vector that's perpendicular to the line of action of force. So I find the torque this way. So how is that going to work? Well, um, the... And I'm going to just forgive me as I draw a lot of pictures, but I think it's going to help because that picture is pretty crowded. I'm going to draw another neater ladder. It's a little narrower. And I'm going to tip it so it's at an angle. And I'm going to draw that first vector, that 500. I'm going to make it a little smaller. So that's 500 newtons from that person that's on the ladder. And there are, they are, <laughs> they're, up the ladder by three meters, right? So that's three meters. And so what I want to find is that perpendicular distance, that right there. That's the, here's the line of action of the force, right? And so if I can find this distance right here in my, in my bracket, Right, that's going to be my perpendicular. And that means I can just go right to geometry rather than figuring out angles. I just think that goes a little faster. Um, and so let's go back to the original picture here. We have an angle of 57 degrees in there, right? It's barely legible, but we're going to go with 57 degrees. So this angle is 57 degrees. So that's adjacent. That's a hypotenuse, that three. Uh, so I can use cosine of 57 degrees is equal to my R perpendicular for this force. It's gonna, there it is, right? Divided by 3, because that's my hypotenuse. So R perpendicular should be equal to 3 times cosine of 57. Okay, so 3 times cos 57. And I get 1 point... I get n numbers, right? So... Um, that's going to help me when I go to do the torque of the person. So that's gonna, they're doing negative torque. Their weight is 500 newtons. And we just figured out the R perpendicular, right? 1.63 meters. And similarly, the ladder, we're going to do a similar thing, right? See how it's a similar triangle? And so there are perpendiculars down here. So this is the same stupid angle. There, no, there it is. There's the angle. And that's still adjacent. It's just five meters here, right? Halfway up the ladder. So the ladder's weight is 200 newtons times its R perpendicular. So what am I doing? I'm taking five times cosine of 57. Five cos 57. And I get 2.72 meters. Okay, dropped out my unit there. And now the wall. So we're almost done. And it gets a lot easier. This is the hardest part. And so not everybody's favorite thing. And that's the part that, you know, you're tired. You're like, no, come on, just give me a number. I don't want to figure out stuff. Geometry. They never told us we'd actually need geometry. Sorry. Um, all right. So anyway, the wall's force is up here, right? And this is the point of reference. So that line of action of the force is right, this horizontal line there. And here's the R perpendicular right in there. So how are we going to find that? Uh, 
So, oh, I can do it. Uh, that's the same as this over here. There's a big right triangle there. The stupid ladder is the hypotenuse, 10 meters. 57 degrees is here, so I'm going to use sine. So that's going to be equal to the force of the wall. That's like my x times 10 sine 57. So trigonometry, geometry, all that adds up to zero. All right, so let's figure it out and see how it comes out here. One, six, three. And I'm going to, other negative one is to 200 times 2.72. And so I get negative 1359 is equal to FW. Uh, this shouldn't be, a, I made a mistake. That should be positive. Forgive me. And that's going to come over here as a minus, and the minuses will cancel out. So let's see what 10 sine 57 is. And that's about 8.39. Okay, so I need to take that 13.59 and divide by 8.39. Takes me forever. Okay, and I get about 162. Okay, so that's the force of the wall, which is the same as the force of friction. Um, and we figured out the normal force already. And let's just make sure, yeah, I didn't make any mistakes. So you can see that matches my, my answer key answers. So this is hard. Like if you were to just, just to jump to this part of the video and look at this, you'd be like, that's a disaster, that picture. You need to draw your own picture, figure out your R perpendiculars. It takes some practice. So don't expect to watch this and understand it. Um, you have to kind of jump in and, and rewind this video. So please practice. That's why I made the video. Thanks so much for sticking with us.